Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of The Mark Medley Show. And I am pleased to come to you once again, sharing my thoughts. And today's podcast episode is titled, I Have Seen This People and Behold, It Is a Stiff-Necked People. Now that's out of the Bible. That's where God is actually talking with Moses as he's trying to give them instructions in terms of freeing the people from Pharaoh. So he's chatting with Moses and and he's letting him know, I know what you're getting ready to deal with because I've seen these folks. And man, are they a stiff-necked bunch. Now the reason I'm starting off this particular episode with that particular Bible story, if you will, is because that is the same way I am feeling right now about us here in the U.S. Throughout this year, we have politicized the coronavirus or COVID-19 and folks coming up with all kinds of excuses and reasons why they can't wear masks or why they need to social distance or stay in the house and and not go to clubs and bars and go to the gym and the things that we normally do. So some folks took it upon themselves that regardless of what science or the doctors or anyone else said, that they were going to do their own thing, being stiff-necked. That's what I mean by stiff-necked. And we've been in this thing now a little over a year, and we still have some folks who are stiff-necked as ever. Now, I get it, because there is not one person on the planet who wants to return to quote-unquote normalcy more than I do. Now, you may equal it, but I can tell you now, you will not surpass it. Because there is no one on the planet more tired of being cooped up in the house, of not being able to go and do as I please, as I normally would, without having to have a mask on. Because as a matter of fact, all the the various guidelines for everything that we have to do, in all honesty, it does take away from the various experiences. However, if that's what we need to do to stop the thing from spreading, if that's what we need to do to keep folks alive, if that's what we need to do to keep folks out of the hospital, then doggone it, that's what we're going to need to do. But yet you have those even sitting down there in Washington, D.C., sitting down there in Congress, sitting down there in the Senate, who are just as stiff-necked as they come. Now, I don't understand why we only have one expert, meaning Dr. Fauci, but it is what it is. Dr. Fauci, I guess, is the expert. But I just don't understand why we only have one. But that's a topic for a different day. But in any event... Dr. Fauci has to constantly keep debating some of our congressmen and some of our senators as to why we need to keep following the precautions. Just yesterday or a couple of days ago, it was with one of them that was talking about our freedoms was being infringed upon because we had to follow these guidelines. Now, this is ridiculous. You want to have some freedoms infringed upon Let us keep on having folks catch this thing and keep dying. I mean, I think that 550,000 or 560,000 folks, I don't think they would consider this having their freedom infringed upon, especially now since they don't have any freedom. They don't even have life. So I don't think they would, for that 560,000 folks who passed away having to do something with COVID, whether it was an underlying condition or an existing condition, that pre-existing condition or underlying condition had not taken them out. It wasn't until COVID-19 or the coronavirus came along that it coupled with that, that it took them out. So I'm sure if those 560,000 folks had the opportunity to have their freedom infringed upon, yet they could still be alive, I'm sure they would take that choice. for. So for a congressman and a senator, and I don't even remember all of their names at this point, because there's a couple of them. There's a couple of them that Dr. Fauci has had to do battle with, and as I said, just as recent as a day or so ago. 
But at the end of the day, this is for me, and I can only speak for me. And I've had the vaccination, but I am still going to wear my mask wherever I go. I'm still going to limit how often I go out and where I go out to. I am not getting on anyone's airplane. I'm not sitting there for no two or three or four hour flight with a mask on and a plane jam full of folks. I don't care how many tests that we take before the flight or prior to the flight returning. There are just some things that we just going to have to bite the bullet on. That if that's what it takes, and again, I am as stir crazy and as tired of being in the house as anyone else, but I'm no fool. And I also would like to live, and I would like to live coronavirus free. And I'm sure your average person is like that. But see, because this thing got politicized with the previous administration, that's why we where we are. So that's why, again, we have some stubborn stiff-necked, arrogant folks. They think this virus is over and it is not. We are not out of the woods with this thing yet. Even with the various vaccinations that we have, we are not out of the woods. Maybe now, and I think in one of my earlier podcasts, one of my earlier episodes, I said we were maybe near the 50-yard line. So, okay, maybe now we're at our opponent's 40 or 35-yard line. We still are not close to the goal because folks are still getting sick. Now our young folks, now our children are also beginning to catch it. So we're not out of the woods with this thing. Now, speaking of stiff necked people, I'm going to shift gears a little bit with all of these shootings. It is getting to the point now on a daily basis that we are hearing of some type of mass shooting or a shooting by a police officer on a perp or a suspect that they are chasing or pulling over. Unfortunately, in many of these instances, there is a loss of life due to gunfire that was unnecessary. Now, in this case with Dante Wright, the officer literally was yelling, taser, 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 and pulled her gun. Now, this is the issue. If he was stopped for a license plate or an air freshener hanging in the window, expired tag or what have you. What was the necessity for a taser or a gun on a routine traffic stop? These routine traffic stops are getting deadly. Now, this is where the stiff necked part comes in again for me. This Dante Wright killing occurred right down the road from the courthouse of which Derek Chauvin is being tried for the murder of George Floyd. Derek Chauvin is a former police officer. One would think that since that trial was going on, that as a police officer, particularly in that area, that they would be a little bit more mindful of their actions, but no. Still just as stiff-necked and stubborn, just going to do it their way regardless. Then we had the Chicago killing with the young man that was 13 years old. The police was chasing him, said, put your hands up. He put his hands up and then they shot him again. You would think given that the George Floyd and the Derek Chauvin case is worldwide, you would think that police would be just a little bit more mindful before they pulled their guns, before they pulled the trigger you would think they would be just a little more mindful seeing that their comrade is sitting up there now teeter-tottering on the brink of being charged with murder. And it is my prayer that he doesn't get off on some silly technicality. And thank God the judge had the wherewithal to caution the prosecution to not cause a mistrial because the prosecution almost introduced some evidence that the court was not aware of. And the judge caught it and said, don't do it because we do not want to have a mistrial. I thank God that he cautioned the prosecution on that scene. And that occurred when the defense brought up this silliness about George Floyd dying from carbon monoxide. Now, I had to, I mean, I, it just absolutely ridiculous because I listened to that and just shook my head in terms of, OK, let's let's play this out and say, all right, by chance, He did die from carbon monoxide poisoning, which was silly, but 
he would not have been under that tailpipe. He would not have been under the back of that police car if it had not been for Derek Chauvin. That's the part that even in that defense doesn't make any sense because if I'm the prosecutor, I'm coming back saying, well, first off, George Floyd would not have been under the tailpipe of that car inhaling carbon monoxide had he not been put there by Derek Chauvin. He was being held there with that man's knee on his neck under that gas pipe. So no matter which way you slice this, Derek Chauvin had something to do with George Floyd's death. And when I tell you the defense have been reaching and grasping at straws, they have been reaching and grasping at straws. And certainly that carbon monoxide argument was one of them. But that's where they almost tripped the prosecution up. And as I said, thank God, the judge cautioned or shall I say from the OJ child admonished admonished the prosecution be careful walk lightly tread lightly because you're on that fine line between causing a mistrial if you have something that you knew that we didn't know and so the prosecution was able to do what they needed to do to keep it from going into a mistrial but again when I say stiff-necked and stubborn if I were a police officer knowing all this were going on I'd be real cautious and careful in terms of even pulling my weapon unless it was a situation where it was me against them. In other words, the other person had their weapon out and they were firing at me. That'd be a little bit different. But in these cases where you're pulling folks over in a car for a quote unquote routine traffic stop. Why is the gun being pulled? And then. What they attempt to do because they tried to do it in the Floyd trial is they try to make the trials about the person who was killed. Now, at the end of the day, no matter how you slice it, those officers who are getting their day in court are still getting something that their victims did not have an opportunity to get. That officer who killed Dante Wright, Derek Chauvin who killed George Floyd, the officer who killed the little Toledo boy. All of them are going to have their day in court, but all the victims, the Toledo boy, George Floyd, Dante Wright, they're not going to have a day in court. They are eternally resting in a grave somewhere. They're not going to have that opportunity that these officers are going to have. And what I find is interesting is this. I always find that those who take someone else's lives fight like hell to keep theirs. It is amazing and fascinating to me that folks who kill someone else and take someone else's life, they fight like absolute hell to keep their own. They fight like hell to keep out of prison. They fight like hell to keep being charged with murder or being uh, sent to death row. And yet they have now taken someone else's life. So what I don't get is what makes them think their life is any more important, important than the life that they took. What makes Derek Chauvin thinks his life was any more important than George Floyd's? What make Officer Kim, I think her name was Kim Potter. I'm not sure. And the only reason I'm not calling it out because I don't have it in front of me and I don't want to miscall it. But I know her first name was Kim. What makes Officer Kim think her life was any more important than Dante Wright? What makes the officer in Chicago think his life was any more important than the little 13-year-old Toledo boy? Yet all of them are going to have an opportunity to have their day in court they're still alive now the other part where we're stiff-necked is this whole notion of these mass shootings I think within the same week that we've been dealing with this Chauvin trial we've had two to three mass shootings you have folks who have lost their mind who are disgruntled with their job or their wife or their lover or whomever And they now go to these places of work and start shooting up these places. We had a case a day or so ago at a FedEx plant in Indianapolis. We had another case and it was on a naval base. And the cases just keep on going and going. And yet we have folks who still don't see where we need some type of reform in terms of 
how guns are accessed. I'm not necessarily saying for those who hunt for sport or for those who uh, legally obtain a weapon and they have one for protection at home. I'm not necessarily saying they need to lose that right. But as I've said in other episodes, I do not see the need for AR-15s. I do not see the need for assault rifles. And yet, we continue to go down this road. Back again to us being stiff-necked. I can only imagine the same way God talked to Moses during that time when he was trying to give Moses, or shall I say giving Moses instructions on how to approach Pharaoh. I can only imagine God sitting there saying, yes, I see. This is a stiff-necked people. Because see, going back to the police in terms of reform, everybody keeps talking about they need more training. They need more training. No, they don't need more training. We need more accountability. The blue, the blue wall needs to be torn down. The, the blue wall needs to be deconstructed. We don't, we don't necessarily need more training because these officers have been trained. Officer Kim was calling taser, 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 yet she pulled her gun, gun, gun. So that's not so much about training, but now that she's done that, now she has, you know, we have, she has to be held accountable. If we had a little bit more accountability in terms of the police, I think we'd start seeing some things change because these folks are being trained. Every time one of these things go down, one of these cases occur, everybody starts talking about more training, more training, more training. First off, uh, beyond accountability, we also need some heart changes. We need some folks to have a whole different mindset and a whole different heart. Because if you have a mindset and a heart, you're going to think a little bit. And I get it. They're, they're in the heat of battle. They only have a couple of seconds to make a decision. But unfortunately, in too many of these instances, that decision is made before they have to make that critical decision. They've made that decision when they've gotten out of their police car and they're approaching that car. They've already made that decision, particularly if they're dealing with an African-American suspect, if they're pulling over an African-American that decision is already made. So we need some heart changes. And you would think with all of this going on, you would think with all these mass shootings that keep on going on, that someone would say, you know what, I'm not going to do a mass shooting. But it's almost as if they're being a copycat. Oh, I saw a mass shooting in California. Let me do one here in Indianapolis. Oh, I saw a mass shooting in Texas. Let me try one here and wherever. It's almost as if they want to be a copycat And they think that's the way to go. I posted this morning on Twitter or yesterday is shooting someone with a gun, the new crack, because that's what it seems like. It's almost getting as if folks are addicted to this shooting of other people. And this is these are not video games where people get back up. This is not video games where folks, all right, you shoot them down in one segment and then they get up in the next. This is not that these folks are dead and they're dead for good. And as I said a couple of minutes ago, the folks who are doing the killing now, they fight like I don't know what to try to save their lives. Stiff necked people. A stiff necked people. If you look at the definition, believe it or not, stiff necked has a definition in Merriam Webster. If you look in the Merriam Webster dictionary, it says stiff necked. Haughty, stubborn, formal, stilted. If you start looking at synonyms, arrogant, assumptive, bumptious, cavalier, chesty, haughty, high and mighty, high handed, high hat, highfalutin, huffy, imperious, important, lofty. Yes, indeed. That's what these attitudes are as these folks These police officers are gunning down folks as all these mass shootings are taking place. That's exactly what it is. Folks refusing to follow the CDC and science guidelines with COVID-19. Yeah, that's just straight up haughty, straight up arrogant. Does it take, will it take you to catch COVID-19 for you to realize that it's real? Because that's the other thing. I see some of these main people that are not following the guidelines, then they catch it. Then they sing a whole different tune. They wind up sitting on the news now trying to warn other people, yes, it's real. Does it take you to catch it for you to understand it's real? 
Does it take you going out in these super spreaders for you to understand it's real? Does it take you going to that gym, that bar, that club, that restaurant, that ball game for you to catch this thing and understand that it's real? For some, it does. Uh, I understand what God was saying when he said, I've seen these people and they are a stiff necked people. Because from where I sit and I watch the news every now and again, I read the news every now and again. That's what comes to my mind as well. We are a stiff necked people. This is another episode of the Mark Medley Show. I thank you for listening. If you want to learn a little bit more about me, feel free to go to my website, Mark A. Medley. Dot com. That's M-A-R-C-A-M-E-D-L-E-Y. That is the portal. That is the hub to all of my various social media sites. It is the hub and the portal to my radio show, my blog. Anything that you want to know about, go to the website. It is M-A-R-C-A-M-E-D-L-E-Y dot com.